So one of the first things I did this spring was sell my beautiful John Deere 455. And there were a few reasons why I did that, but the biggest one was because I just felt uncomfortable owning a tractor that cost twice as much as my car while I'm still going through college. You know, I don't even have my own acreage. So here's the empty spot where it's once sat. It was a big adjustment selling it. I knew it was going to be that much because I had never been without a 425 or a 455 since 2015. It had been my primary tractor. But I have a bit of an ace up my sleeve, and that's the John Deere 322. It's an important exercise in living more frugally because now I've got this tractor working really as it should, and it's at a level where I'm comfortable with daily using it. Honestly, shortly after I got the tractor, the implements that came with it were pretty beat up. Uh, the snowblower, the mowing deck, the rototiller that I had with it, they were all in kind of poor shape, and so I used what I could out of them. But at the end of the day, this tractor had its flaws, had little things that really prevented it from being usable, either by the condition of the implements or otherwise, and I never really had a proper excuse to fix it because it was always a backup tractor, and I always had something sitting in the yard that I was planning on fixing or flipping or selling that could mow the lawn. The 425 always worked for me, and so at the end of the day, I just haven't used this thing much over the years. I've only put about 65 hours on it in the past five years of ownership. The only thing that really made it feasible to use this tractor in, to an extent that I'm comfortable with was the acquisition of a few key pieces over 2018. I found myself a 47 inch snowblower, a big dual stage one that you can see in a video that I uploaded a little while ago. I found a blade, I also uploaded a video of me using that 54 inch two way blade. And I also found, thank goodness, a really clean, low-hour, rust-free mowing deck. So all of this came together, and now I actually had a tractor with some implements that I could use that were in really great shape. And I knew the tractor itself was mechanically sound, so there you go. Now, that wasn't all there was to it. In order to use this tractor very reliably, I also had to spend some money and spruce up the mowing deck. So it's got all new belts, it's got virtually brand new Gator G6 mowing blades on it, and it also has a new center pulley. It's the speed up pulley, which is an actual part that you can get from John Deere. They still make it for this 50 inch mowing deck, and it increases blade tip speed by 10%. I was honestly dissatisfied with the cut quality and having a bit of a post-sale regret letting go of my really nice 54 inch and 60 inch mowing decks on those 4x5 series tractors they always cut so nice and I was just having trouble so I decided well you know what I'm gonna bite the bullet spend a couple hundred dollars on this speed up pulley and see what a difference it can make and the cut quality as you can probably see here is pretty decent Honestly, it wasn't the biggest difference I was hoping for, but then again, our property is full of dips and divots, and we're essentially mowing natural prairie grass on soil that is almost entirely hard clay. There's only so much you can ask for. If your mowing deck has four gauge wheels like this one, you'll leave certain areas slightly uncut. If your mowing deck has no gauge wheels at all, you'll scalp like hell. And honestly, the only mower that's ever cut my lawn to a perfect finish was the Snapper Hivac 33 inch rear engine rider with its big singular blade. The tractor has been a boon to use. I have the steering knob, power steering, hydrostatic, and turning brakes, and all of that comes together as almost necessary for dealing with this property. As you've seen mowing in these tighter areas, I pretty much never take my hand off of the wheel, always making minute adjustments to get the corner of that mowing deck as close to whatever tree or obstacle as possible. I still have yet to find an effective 
conventional mowing pattern for this lawn and it's different every time I mow. You'd think after 14 years I'd have figured it out but honestly something in my brain I think still is just trying to get used to it, trying to optimize and squeeze every minute that I can out of a mowing session. I enjoy my seat time but it's also nice to be efficient. Switching to this as my primary tractor has made reminded me that I took a lot of things for granted over my years in the tractor hobby and the one of the biggest was the fact that I never had downtime I always had a tractor that I could jump on the lawn would always get mowed it didn't matter what but now that this is my only lawn mowing tractor I've had to learn a few hard lessons when I went to install the speed up pulley for the first time I found that the old center pulley would not come off of the mandrel shaft so while the lawn needed to be mowed and what did I have to do I had to mow with my roper that's another video entirely which I have partially edited and I'll probably upload it eventually but there I was actually mowing the lawn for the very first time with my roper RT16 because this thing was down and it stayed down for about two weeks before I had the chance to uh, cut the old center pulley off with an acetylene torch and mount the new speed up pulley by that time the bearings were ruined in the center mandrel so I had to replace those two two weeks later I finally got the mowing deck back together I also earlier in the summer had a belt snap on me and I couldn't get the spare belt running in time so I mowed with the GT 19.9 and I hadn't touched those Sears tractors or used them for anything serious in quite some time. I had never used the roper for mowing. So now all of a sudden I'm cutting the lawn with gear driven Sears and I'm realizing just how far I let those things go. There's little things that I could do to them to make them more usable but I just never had the wherewithal to. And that's another big lesson that I've learned. It's just the equipment that I've kept over the years has suffered because I've never seemed to have the energy to maintain it to a highest degree as well as fixing stuff for sale. It always seems to be an effort budget like I was talking about. But going from those Sears to the John Deere really also reminds me just how much of a necessity things like power steering and hydrostatic are for mowing this lawn. and. I doubt I would ever look for a machine again that didn't have one of those things. This John Deere 322 is just absolutely perfect for all of my applications as they are and I could not ask for a better year-round tractor to help maintain our property. I still do have several plans for this tractor. I want to replace the damper for the hydrostatic controls just because well I'm using this tractor so often now I'm really feeling that jerkiness going in from forward to reverse and through slight speed adjustments which happens all the time it's a more expensive part but it's easy to change out and well worth it so that's on the list I have some winter plans for this tractor a few of which are already underway but I don't want to give any of those away now that's for another video and ultimately the biggest thing I'll probably ever do with this tractor is take apart the carburetor completely and soak it in lacquer thinner for several days on end. This is to cure an issue that I've been having with the tractor and that many 322 owners suffer from in terms of hesitation on acceleration especially when the tractor is cold and a pronounced lack of power to the engine as well. I had honestly just attributed this to a governor issue because I'd cleaned out the carburetor with carb cleaner and brake cleaner and everything to the best of my abilities, compressed air, all the rest of it. But I have a friend, hi Andre if you're watching, who also has a 322 and who's much braver than I am in a lot of respects and so he soaked his Nikki carburetor in lacquer thinner for a couple days and reported fantastic results. I'm just a little nervous to do that because this is my primary tractor and if I screw the carburetor up and have to replace it on short notice it is available from John Deere but for 914 Canadian dollars that is a tough pill to swallow. 
One thing I did discover though was that the Kawasaki FD620D carburetor, which is also a Nikki carburetor, um, an engine commonly found in Argos and John Deere 425s, might actually fit the Yanmar 3TG66UJ. So if I find a cheap Nikki carburetor, or if any of you guys have one, I'd love to perform that experiment and see if I could clean this thing up and get it running on a newer Nikki carburetor than the one that is specifically designed for it. I'd love to see the differences. It's unfortunate that I gave away my spare Nikki carburetor thinking that I didn't need it, but evidently I wasn't taking a very close look at the John Deere 322. I know at least that the choke shafts are different, but that's about the only thing. So that's pretty much it for John Deere 322 footage. Now I'm going freestyle off the cuff. You get to watch me mowing here with my trash picked John Deere 14 SB. I've had this thing for two years. Sold my Hondas, haven't looked back since. This is a wonderful mower. I'm gonna answer some fan mail that I got about a month ago from Joseph the GT Kid from Facebook with the John Deere 112. Uh, thanks for writing me. I'm sorry I haven't had the chance to write back, but I figured I might as well address it somehow, even if it's in this video, because writing has never been my strong suit. It's great to hear that your collection is going so strong. Uh, isn't it awesome to have relatives, parents, grandparents, however, that support you in this hobby? It's so cool that your dad went a different way to work and just happened to notice that 1811. Um, I'm really happy that um, I'm really happy that you have some more John Deere's in the fleet. I've always loved my 425s. I found it's it's cool that you're looking for one. At the same time, they are a little big for you know what your property is in New England. The 425 was just about the max size that was really applicable for our property here. We live on 3.2 acres and uh, have a moderate to long driveway heavy snow in the winter, that kind of thing. I'm envious of your Cub Cadets also. I only owned one proper working old Cub Cadet, which was a 1650, and I didn't own that tractor for very long, but I would love to have a Cub with the Kohler Magnum engine or even one of the Kubota-powered Cubs like the 2182. Uh, it's awesome that your dad is so supportive of you in this hobby. Gotta love all the supportive parents out there. I'm super thankful for every parent who's stuck their neck out to give their kid an edge in the garden tractor hobby and uh, support them. It, if it weren't for my parents, I certainly wouldn't have uh, gotten as far as I have with this hobby. They sponsored a lot of my uh, earlier purchases. And of course, I paid them back with interest. That was the whole point. But at the same time, uh, they stuck their necks out for me and allowed me to fill the yard up with junk until I sold it and made some money and now I, I have a career to thank for it, to be honest. And uh, so it's an inspiring story that you managed to get that Cub 1811 for so cheap. And it's awesome to think that it only had 530 hours, that it had a three point, um, all that kind of stuff. And well, hey, you've really got a lot of good stuff going on. The more the more you can get, whether it's to fix and keep or fix and flip, uh, anything that you can do is advantageous to you at this point. To answer your question about Plow Day 2020, I don't know yet. I wish I could tell y'all that I was coming back down there, but the reality is I think school's just going to get in the way again. And um, 2021, though, that's what I'm thinking I might make a bigger deal about it. Uh, I'll be graduated, uh, and who knows, I might take a trip. It might be really worth my while to do something more extravagant. Um, maybe I could even drive across Canada. Yeah, I have all sorts of these wild ideas in my head. I got to do some stuff while I'm young. But uh, honestly, every time I think about Plow Day, I just think about the wonderful, wonderful people in this hobby. and just how connected I feel. I, heck, I get emotional every time I think about it. Um, so, if you're watching this video, you met me at Plow Day. Uh, I really appreciated it. 
Uh, shout out to Harrison Fowler who came up to me, I remember, and uh, you told me how much you like my videos. That's what I make them for. I make them for you guys, the, the people who comment, the people who follow me for years and uh, who value my production. And so there'll be more of them coming. I can't guarantee when, but you'll see me soon.